The main thing with a brick and mortar um, is is you do need capital. So I, I was planning um, and saving for years, and there were two couples that came together. So we we pulled resources. Um, and the best advice that I ever got in my entire life um, was do what you can now. Um, originally, I, I wanted to open a bed and breakfast um, with a cute little cafe. Um, I looked into hotel costs in San Francisco and it's, it's astronomical. So I said, I can open a cafe right now. That's what I can do. My skill set's there. I have the team. Um, it's within reach. And so, um, so that's what I did. Um, I, with a brick and mortar, you have to find a location. Uh, location is, you always hear that in real estate, um, but it's, it's super important in, um, with a business to make sure that your business matches the location. Um, so I, I found a location, but it needed a full build out. Um, I'm sorry to bring it up to code. It wasn't a restaurant before. Um, so I did a, a design build um, with with um, an architecture firm. Um, I pulled all of my own permits, and um, and I think it it took almost a year between finding the location and actually opening. Um, but that part for me was um, a, unusually rewarding. I really liked the process of uh, going through the steps of, of the permits and the building. Um, and securing a lease, um, which, which is very unusual. Um, and then from there, uh, as soon as we opened, um, we, we had a cult following. It was, it was unusual. We never did marketing. Um, we did pick a great location. It's near SF MoMA and the Giants Stadium and Moscone. And then it's in the center of what used to be the center of, um, of Soma Tech. Um, in San Francisco, and so we we immediately had business uh, and and repeat business. Um, it kind of had that coffee shop feel of people would come in every day, and with the rotating menu, um, you could eat there every day. So that was that was um, that was really nice, uh, a nice way to start. We had a just a line out the door um, from the beginning. Um, so yeah, that that was. That was really um, encouraging, and and then they stayed. They stayed the entire six years, um, and and I just built out the the business model to reflect and to to offer more services as we grew. Um, so that that's kind of the beginning of, of the brick and mortar. Anything uh, in uh, specific that you wanted to go into on that one? So how how long does it take for you to reach to that scale? Like let's say, like break even, you you have people line up, have enough customer. So break even. Uh, so we were profitable, um, and actually our sales uh, within the first year were um, almost to a million dollars, and then we hit went up to one point three, one point for uh, at the end of the six years. So I never actually really grew the profit so much, but I, I increased the profit margin. Um, and so I just, I tweaked the, the, um, the concept of the business, but I, um, I had secured a 10 year lease and uh, I paid back the original cash investment uh, four years in. Um, not including all, all of the other ROIs of um, phone bills, internet, cars. Um, we took a business trip every year where we traveled somewhere in the world and, uh, and cooked with chefs in different cities um, and countries, which was really great. Um, so just the, plus just having a job that you like uh, is really rewarding. And um, so all of those, all of those things kind of um, folded into it. Um, but yeah, we, we were, uh, it was a profitable business, um, which is hard to do in, uh, in the food world. And on average, just so everyone knows, it's um, eight to 10% in, in um, not fast food um, is, um, is a good, profit margin and after year two we were hitting about 22 23 percent 
Um, and that, um, just so you know, that did not come from my employees. Uh, that came from us uh, just working with purveyors. Our employees actually, um, what I'm most proud of is uh, we had the same six core staff members from the beginning, like literally from the start of the business until the end when we closed six years later. Um, I worked really hard to make sure that they were satisfied um, and had some really nice perks. Um, so I did the four 10 hour days. Um, usually if you have a brick and mortar, you kind of have a minimum wage situation going on. So you need to really work in a lot of turnover. So working on um, uh, employee uh, happiness and satisfaction is really important. And it was always a, a major player for me. Um, so like I said, we did the four 10 hour shifts. I paid for everyone's commute. Um, we did tip pooling equally across the front of the house and back of the house, which is something that the food service doesn't do much. Um, and then another fun thing that we did for our staff was uh, we ended up trading food with uh, a neighborhood uh, massage body work place and our, all of our employees would get a massage every one to two months. Um, a lot of them had never even had a massage. So um, people that work with their body was a really big plus for them. So those are, some of the incentives uh, we use to, to help the business to keep it steady to, to, and if you have lower turnover, your margins are a lot better because it, you don't have to retrain, you're not spending any time on that. So that's, that's a big, it's a big deal. Um, and it's important to, uh, to work on employee happiness. Um, that, that's so. awesome, that's really interesting. I am dying for a massage. I would love to volunteer <laughs> just to um, get well, so, um, so as the place that we traded, it's on Third Street. Uh, there, they just opened back up, and they do. I would say some of the best body work out there. So if you are in the Bay Area, definitely plug for them. Uh, I've had probably a hundred massages from them uh, over the six years, so I'm I'm pretty satisfied customer on that front. That's awesome, water deal. Um, yeah. Yeah, sounds, sounds cool. And it's really impressive, like you basically be profitable in your first year and you have six employees from the very beginning, right? Um, I, I, I know you mentioned to me earlier, you actually had multiple revenue stream from very beginning yeah. too. Would you elaborate a little bit more on that? Yeah, uh, one of the major things I think that uh, brick and mortars um, need to, to think about, and not, not all brick and mortars, just in general, but if you have a physical space, you need to, um, I, I think about it in chunks of time. So the space needs to be utilized at all times. Um, and so a lot of the revenue streams, um, I, I recommend four or five different revenue streams um, that work. Um, we, we did our in-house food service. We had a coffee shop that was not profitable. Um, and so I ended up cutting that. Um, we did a catered office lunches, which ended up being very profitable. So I made that a, a bigger portion of our business. Um, we did corporate um, private buyout events in the evening. So that's how we use the space in the evening. Um, and then on weekends, um, I had a lot of pop-ups that rented the space. Um, and I, I think uh, cause is on, on right now, but uh, he would rent the space for events as well. Um, but yeah, the, the space was being used all of the time. Um, and and it, it goes, it goes um, the same way with employees. Um, I had a, a large uh, team for a while, um, kind of front of the house, back of the house, traditional setup. And so I just kind of stripped that down too and made sure that uh, not everyone could do every task, but the versatility was there and, and the team would move about the, the space through the day and they could do deliveries, they could um, plate the food, they could cook. So. Um, the whole the whole day was really maximized and the space was really maximized um, and that's really important um, with your fixed cost with your overhead uh, labor costs are very high um, and so it's it's a nice way um, to to use everyone's time and then also 
um, the the tipping and the tip pulling is much higher if you can uh, if you can slim it down and um, for for the workforce and um, my staff is making between twenty six and twenty eight dollars an hour for each person um, so that that's nice um, and I think you need both of those things to go hand in hand and and you can use that uh, idea in, in many spaces, not just in like a physical workspace. Um, I, I did um, work a lot um, and you will be dragged into it, but normally you, you don't mind it. Um, and, and what I managed to do was I had kind of a cutoff time um, where we would trade off who, because we did have a lot of events going on. So I would turn my phone off at five o'clock every day, which is nice. Um, and then on the weekends, I would only take special events on the weekends. So I really did set, I, swim, I, I started with much bigger hours as well. We were open from seven to seven at the beginning. And then I just looked at the day, um, my husband's a data analyst and and we saw like when people were coming in, um, you know, what what time works. So I, I just narrowed that part down so much that uh, we ended up only being open from 7.30 to 2.30 um, with the exact same um, profit margin and, and uh, just net sales in the end. So if you can um, really, um, look at your um, at your data and understand um, understand that it, it it does make a big difference and you can make those decisions I, I say it's cutting the fat I always look at um, I always every few months I, I look at um, just the data I use square so everything's a credit card transaction so they have really good reporting and um, I just see what what can go, what's not profitable, what time slots are not working. Um, and then you just fill in with the other things. You do the buyouts or the pop-ups or whatever streams of revenue that, that could be plausible. Maybe you have a baker that comes in and does a night shift or you have, um, there are tons of options. Uh, you can be a commissary kitchen, you can rent your space. Um, so it's just um, being creative with your time and then just setting your own parameters. Uh, what are you going to be happy with? Um, what salary do you want? You know, or what? You know, what kind of profit sharing do you want? Do you, you know? Um, so I think you can work as much or as little as as you set set up the business. It's always going to be a lot at the beginning, but um, it can be sustainable and and a a well rounded business. Um, and then you can start to to pull back. Uh, once you're happy with, with how everything's running. Um, and that's where all the other things come into play, like the staff turnover, staff happiness. If you get all that really smooth, then you can have, um, you can step back and have more of a lifestyle that you want. 